A brand new profile of first daughter and presidential advisor Ivanka Trump features interviews with President Trump, Jared Kushner, and 50 sources close to Ivanka Trump, including one who said this. She is unwilling to concede that she ought to understand why someone might have interpreted her father's access Hollywood comments as misogynistic or his remarks after Charlottesville as tone deaf, if not racist. Ivanka knows Trump probably better than anyone, the source went on, and she knows him to be good. In Ivanka's snow globe, evidence to the contrary simply does not exist. Joining us now is CNN political analyst Elena Plot. She wrote the piece for The Atlantic. It is a fascinating, fascinating and very deep profile. Thank you so much for being with us. That idea that somehow Ivanka Trump has siloed or compartmentalized so many of these questions when there is evidence of her father's behavior. Talk to me about that. What's been interesting about reporting this piece is seeing how Ivanka's adeptness at compartmentalizing her life started at a really, really young age. Um, you can see this through memoirs she wrote in her 20s, but when her parents divorced in a very public tabloid-based manner when she was nine years old, it really, really jarred her in a way that it would any child. But Ivanka's reaction in the way it wasn't of her siblings, so Don chose not to talk to his father for a year. Ivanka, on the other hand, decided that she was only going to see her father as good and do whatever it took to earn his affection. And it's been fascinating to see that progress throughout her life. And now it's manifesting itself here in the White House. She really, as my source said, retains a view that her father is good and only good. And if you interpret him to be a certain way, one, she can't acknowledge that the interpretation itself is valid. But two, she just thinks what it's speaking to is wrong entirely. And that gets to the other, perhaps, misconception about Ivanka Trump, and maybe explains why it is a wrong conception, which is that she's a moderating force somehow inside the White House. Let me just put up this Us Weekly cover that had Ivanka Trump on it, and the headline there was, Why I Disagree with My Dad. Now, inside the article, you note that this was not a headline. She never said this. The Us Weekly took some liberties there. But the notion, the very notion that she was ever going to be a moderating force on her father, you say, is flawed. Right. I, you know, when you're doing nexus research and whatnot, as I'm sure you know, when you're preparing a story or reporting things out, I remember thinking, OK, we all see Ivanka and her husband, Jared, as, quote unquote, moderating influences on this president. And I was trying to dig up, you know, where the first time was that she might have said that she was pro-choice, for example, or that she, you know, was a huge activist when it came to climate change. And it just didn't exist, John. I mean, it's just nowhere. And and so it was, I mean, it was quite a journey to kind of comb through moments in the campaign where you saw that she was able to kind of craft a narrative, that she was this polite society, kind of technocratic, neoliberal, if you want to say that, just based on not having kind of the garishness of her father. So because she was surrounded by people like her father and Corey Lewandowski and Roger Stone and all of these people who just seem like, mm -hmm. um, you know, the opposite of polite. Mm -hmm. society. The fact that she was able to use them as foils meant that a lot of people, I think, inadvertently projected what they wanted her political beliefs to be onto her. And yet there was never actually mm -hmm. evidence to support the fact that they were there. You use the phrase craft the narrative. A phrase that she has used is uh, cultivate authenticity, which is why the process of reporting this to me was so interesting. She would not speak to you on the record really in depth, but you did talk to the president. And when you were in the Oval Office interviewing the president, Ivanka Trump just happens, coincidentally, to wander in with news about jobs. Explain that moment. It's a Tuesday around 4.30. Uh, the president and I are wrapping up our interview. I think we're on maybe our second to last question. And then all of a sudden he just, he looks up and he's clearly really excited. And I didn't even have to turn around to know who it was. Um, but of course it was Ivanka. And she just feigned such shock. She said, I was just coming by. I forgot you guys were doing this. But, you know, I just had to tell the president that Siemens just added 75,000 more jobs to our 
our workforce development program. Um, so of course, very conveniently mm -hmm. timed, but it, sp it spins out of kind of mm -hmm. a brand that she's worked meticulously at her whole life. When you're somebody who does run a lifestyle brand, you're always trying to protect, per mm -hmm. perfect the facade or the look of mm -hmm. you know a carefree, easy life even when that's not actually the case. Two more things I want to get in very quickly. One is a statement from Matt Bevins, the, the governor of Kentucky, just mm -hmm. to make the point here that, that, that Ivanka Trump seems to be criticized from either side no matter what. Uh, the Kentucky governor, who has worked closely with her on workforce development, told me Ivanka could literally save an elderly woman from getting hit by a train and people would blame her for disrupting the travel time. Uh, so there are those who defend her. And, and just very quickly, the last story, you, you were in her office, speaking to her off the record, and you noticed a book about Burning Man <laughs> right now, I am told reliably by Allison Camerata, Burning Man is where you go to to you know <laughs> smoke pot. pot and you know hallucinogens, <laughs> yes, okay. acid, and listen to and, and listen to music. According so to Allison me. says. So, what was the significance of that book? in Ivanka I, Trump's office. Well, I was sitting there in her office and you know, I'm looking around trying to take in as many notes as I can mentally about what the space looks like, what she has um, on the different tables. And I see the spine of this coffee book, uh, this coffee table book called Playa Fire. So I just wrote it down really quickly. And then I looked it up later on Amazon and I thought, wait, Burning Man? Ivanka Trump and Burning Man? I mean, the link just did not square to me at all. So that became just sort of a moment, or a vehicle rather, for trying to help the reader understand why it's so hard in a way to do a story on her, because she is in so many ways a cipher. So if that link is a genuine one, if that's a festival that she's actually longing to go to, or she just wants you to think she wants you to go to that to seem edgy and interesting, I mean, I just, I don't know the answer. Right. I, I'm not sure there is an answer, but it's the question that is the most interesting thing there. Elena Plot, thank you so much. Uh, people should go check out this article in The Atlantic because it really is fascinating. Appreciate well, you being you with so us. Thank you so much.